All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you to another episode of the Gavin and Brown Show. I'm Lamar Gafford. I'm Robert Brown. And once again, very good show for us today here. Talk recapping week two of the college of the NFL season, week three of the college football season. Also giving you guys our picks and everything else that's also going along in the sports world today. For most importantly, right now, I guess we could just go back to week two in the uh, NFL season and. So far, I mean, I guess, I guess well, we well the, the best place really would to start off with was the Seahawks Forty Nine ers game, which a lot of people hyped this up, but it really really does. Does. yeah, I didn't get a chance to see much of the game due to the delay. I tried staying up for it, but uh, I couldn't make it. I did get to see uh, a few cap capping mistakes, but um, looks like the Seahawks dominated from the score at the end of the game, and uh, they're pretty much in the driver's seat. For the um for the AFC West right now, um my impressions are right now that San Francisco has some questions they need to answer. Not necessarily only in Kaepernick, but also just their receivers and uh the defense. Uh, what do you take away from it? Well, I have to basically say once again, props to the Seattle crowd because I think that crowd had a uh, that crowd had a record. Um, they set the Guinness Book of World Records for loudest crowd, so congratulations to them on that. Um, but really, it just showed here Seattle was a very tough team. And I guess whenever they're at home, they're again one of the toughest. They're, they're, they're very tough to beat. I mean, they basically, uh, like you said, Kaepernick had a couple of bad mistakes in the game. And you also so had them, you know, running the football and also playing very good defense with the Seahawks. So, you know, those two things right there really helped them out in that. Now, as far as the 49ers are concerned, uh, I think there there has been one thing that they really have been lacking over the past couple of games that we have not seen, and that is their commitment to running the football. Um, they haven't – that they didn't use Frank Gore in the earlier game against the uh, the Packers. And they sure didn't use them because I guess they were pretty much getting blown out at this point. But we haven't seen that running game from them. And that has been one of those things that has really helped them out over the past couple of years. And it seems like in a way they've abandoned it a little bit now, wouldn't you say? In a sense, um, maybe it's due to the fact that Kevin has had a great game uh, week one. Those, um, you know, amazing stacks of uh, passing wide. But I think they'll find their way. I think it'll be a more of a balanced attack. Uh, I guess they're trying to get them um, in the stride. You know, uh, this is his first full-length season as an NFL star, so we'll continue to see him develop that chemistry. And then we'll we'll also see more of uh, Frank Gore throughout the season. Uh, maybe there's something we don't know about. Maybe he isn't 100%. Uh, you never know. But I think we're going to see him turn it on soon. That is true. I mean, and once again, the Niners are are a very talented squad and once again it's just this was just one of those games right there that you hate to really see a team lose and especially like that we didn't expect them to lose like that but I think the next few games um, you know they can pretty much bounce back they got the Colts this week so that might be an interesting game to see here but um, I think they'll, they'll, they will bounce back. I mean, they, they're just too talented and they're just too good anyway, otherwise, than to really, um, you know, to, to really see them go out there and struggle a little bit. Another game that really caught my attention was the Manning Bowl. Broncos defeated the Giants 41-23. to Once again, Peyton Manning is continuing to go on this on his tear. The stats weren't as gaudy as they were, but yet he willed his way to victory. And once again, Eli Manning has been kind of struggling over the last couple of these past couple of games. Yeah, it's looking bad. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily put it all on him, but it does seem as if um, he's having some trouble. Uh, it's kind of like Eli being Eli. We've seen this from before. Uh, rough start. Giants period. Rough start. And then, you know, just soon turning it on at some point in the season and winning games and somehow, you know, making the playoffs. But all right, if I was a Giants fan, I wouldn't be too worried. Uh, they played two pretty good teams. Uh, I just think that right now they just finding a way. Um, you know, Victor Cruz could have a solid season. Mm-hmm. 
Hakeem Nicks is still decent. Now, they have the weapons there. It's just putting it all together. And that game was, I mean, they led that game. I mean, right. it was a game where Denver had to come back. And, uh, you know, the Broncos showing once again that they're a second-half team this season. And, uh, you know, it, it was a solid effort. I mean, the Cowboy game they had, they, they kind of gave it away, you know. Uh, so it, it, it's not necessarily um, – I don't think I would throw in the white towel if I'm a Giants fan yet or just write them off. They have a great chance to come back. Mm-hmm. And definitely. And we really have seen them come back from from, from kind of, well, in the same situation before. Because I want to say 2007, they started off 0-2, and, and look where it got them, Super Bowl championship. And I know, we're not, I know I'm not saying that they're not going to make it to the Super Bowl, but, I mean, again, the Giants are – very talented out here, and I just can't see a Tom Coughlin-led team go 0-3. They really look, and like as you said, too, and like the piggyback off of what you just said, too, I mean, they had leads over the past, I mean, over the in, in that game. They had a lead in that game. And also against the Cowboys, even though they did turn with the ball six times, they had a chance to win the game late if it wasn't for an Eli Manning interception. So, you know, there is talent on this team, and this team can still go out there and do it. Uh, they play against Carolina, so I think they're, they, they'll they probably get themselves back on the right track uh, because right now a win is pretty much going to be the capable thing for them. Now, about the Broncos, what do you say about them, too? Uh, this is as usual for the most part. Uh, but, um, I mean, like I said earlier, they still like a second-half team, which is something that could uh, do them in – uh, the playoffs, which did last year, um, just need to get more consistency in the first half instead of you know always having to come back. But uh, I mean, they 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 look decent. Um, Eric Decker seems to have troubles this year, but that's happening when you bring in a new receiver. Um, hopefully, he'll he'll be able to um, you know turn things around. I, I think they're they're right now they're one of the elite teams in the NFL right now. But we're only two weeks into the season, so we'll continue to see. Right. Um. Other things that have also went along in this um, in this season, pretty much right now, I guess the more surprising thing that just happened was to, was well the bombshell that we were hit with today with the uh, with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, it already seems like it's week two, and it seems like right now they've given up on the season. Brandon Whedon, he gets hurt, and they've going with Brandon. Uh, I think Brandon Hoyer. Brian Hoyer as their new quarterback, the third string guy. So basically, Jason Campbell still stays out here as the backup. And they just traded Trent Richardson to the Indianapolis Colts for a first round pick. Thoughts? Uh, I'm baffled. I don't know why this happened. Uh, it seems like a panic move as if they just really wanted to. to, to uh, I don't know. I don't get it. It seems forced. It seems unprepared. It seems like they didn't think. It's just a lot of things going on right now that I don't get. Uh, I mean, if Trent Richardson wasn't, if, if he wasn't the first pick of that draft, and if they didn't take Wheaton first round, I would maybe understand this, but I, I'm, I'm lost. I, I don't get it. I mean, do they like finishing last in the division? I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a baffling thing to me, too, now. Maybe I can understand the quarterback. Uh, a lot of people couldn't get it, but maybe I could understand that. But you're basically trading away your best offensive player, which let's also go ahead and say this too. Cleveland basically paid off a big bounce. I mean, big, a big, pretty big deal to get this guy in the first place because they traded to Minnesota first round pick a fourth round pick, a seventh and a fifth round pick in that same season just for the right to go out there and get Trent Richardson. And to basically after 18 games and just say, well, you know what? Uh, We're not going to, you know, we're pretty much going to nix the deal right here and we're basically going to cut our losses and we're just going to go ahead and just go in the next season and pretty much try to position ourselves to get that number one pick. It's just... It's just unfathomable right there. Um, I don't know what the GM is really thinking about in that case. And 
honestly, I would think about this. If they still kept Trent Richardson, they still would have been probably like, they probably would have had a top five or a top ten pick, but yet they still would have been in a good position to probably get themselves a quarterback. And, I mean, and wouldn't that have been at least better to probably just go ahead and have that then also have the star running back that you got that you really wanted, and then build around that. I guess I, I mean. I, I guess mean, it makes more sense yeah. to me. I just don't get it. why would you? Okay, it looks like then then the Whedon isn't the guy. That's what it looks like. Right. Because to talk about hopefully getting a quarterback uh, first round. Mm-hmm. So Whedon's not the guy. That's the guy you took first round. Right. Trent Richards is the guy you traded away who was the your number one pick in that draft. Mm-hmm. So basically, you wasted. Not only a year and a half with these guys, but you just also wasted just the draft picks and the time, the money. Signing these guys, it just seems so silly. It seems just a waste of time. I, I don't understand what's the end game. Because, okay, if, even if you do get the quarterback you want, you get a Manziel or Bridgewater or whatever, mm-hmm. what's the next plan? I mean, what, what's the, well, are you going to trade that guy away too when he has a bad game? Or it's just, I don't get it. Exactly, and it really sets your fans in the in the, in pretty much the wrong situation. Uh, in like, it gives them the wrong idea. I know a fans Brown, I'm a Browns fan on Twitter. Yes, they do exist, Rob. There are Brown fans, and they, <laughs> and they, it's just and and he was basically fuming about the whole thing, and I just retweeted something here where you know this is from uh, Daryl. Uh, Ruder, Browns reporter for 92.3 The Fan in Cleveland, Ohio, he basically said right here that source tells me that phones at the Browns headquarters have been ringing off the hook with the phone calls from angry ticket holders in the wake of the Richardson trade. This is Ruder wrong fan, F-A-N. And rightfully so, because it gives you, it gives your fan base the wrong idea in giving up in this early of a season. I mean, just think about it. It's just, it, 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 it seems like a basket. It's like a basketball team really giving up in November uh, after thinking that they probably they might have a chance, or a baseball team giving up in April thinking that they had a chance. And stuff, and then it's just—it's just like I said—it just gives your fans the wrong idea. We know that the Browns probably weren't, might not have been a playoff team, but yet they were still growing. And as we had predicted them, I think we had said they—they they were going to be a little bit better than they were last year because, I mean, they had a young squad, they had Richardson, and they had a pretty decent defense out there that had that kept them in games last year that was growing as well. It's just once again, I just don't get it. I don't get it either, and it's going to really show just how bad or how genius this GM uh, president combination is that they can pull this off and somehow get it to work. Mm-hmm. Now, for the Colts, if you're a Colts fan, I'm ecstatic about this trade. Oh yeah, very ecstatic about this trade. Um, I don't know if they're going to win the division this year, but this puts them. In a, this might put them in a little bit of a better position. But just think about it, though. For the years to come, you're going to be pretty much. You have a young squad that made it to the playoffs last season, and that has a very good chance of making it this season. Um, right now, uh, they, uh, right now, I I would probably say next year, or next year. Or, or, or the following year, they're probably going to win the, the AFC South and be in very big contention for probably the AFC Championship or maybe even the Super Bowl. Possibly. So I think right now they can contend for that division because uh, Houston looks streaky. Right. I, that's one of the reasons why I picked Tennessee to beat Houston this past week, and they, they really almost happened. Mm-hmm. Should have happened, but uh, yeah, Houston definitely looks vulnerable. And I think right now would be the perfect time for the Colts to make that knockout punch. Right. And. I can't wait to see when these two teams play against each other. And right now, I'm actually pulling up the schedule. It, I mean, because um, let's see. Right now, um, you're looking at week nine. The Colts are playing against Houston at Houston. And they have a big showdown pretty much for all the Marvels in Indianapolis in week 15. So those two games are really going to tell a whole lot just about who's going to win that division right there. Um as far as the Browns, well, I guess the the game that you're probably going to look forward to 
December the 11th in Cleveland, Jaguars against the Browns, and that could be that could be that. That could be that one right there. Now shifting gears a little bit too, what other game also impressed you? Kansas City and Dallas. A game that I picked the Kansas City Chiefs to win because it looked like a trap game for Dallas. Uh, going to Arrowhead, Arrowhead after the emotional win over uh, New York. And the Chiefs, who are really even though they beat Jacksonville uh, week one, coming off a high and, uh, you know, just looking to start the season out the right way. And I was very impressed with how they won the game. It wasn't a shootout. It was just good old-fashioned defense and the right plays at the right time. Right. And I make no bones about it right here. This Chiefs team is a very good team out here. And as much as it pains me to see this game and see us lose like this and stuff, really the Chiefs, they're, they're pretty much – they're pretty much the dark horses, like what everybody else, everybody had predicted them to be right now. They're two and zero. Of course, we, of course, they're probably not going to go out there and probably get ten or eleven wins here, but they're going to be a very good team that's going to keep the right there in it because Alex Smith is a, Alex Smith has been a pretty good quarterback right there. He might not have the numbers, but he has been a very he has been a pretty good quarterback for what they do, and also. Andy Reid. I mean, the genius that is Andy Reid right there, too. Yeah. So, uh, I, I I really had to go ahead and say that one. I think one of the games that really impressed me, too, though, was, um, I guess I could just go ahead and probably say, um, it's either going to be the Bills winning that late second game against the Panthers but I think I was probably a little bit more impressed with the Chargers going against the Eagles, actually. Um, coming back, short week. Granted, the Eagles were in a short week as well, but the Chargers were pretty much a fourth quarter collapse away from being 2-0. and And just to basically go out there and show and show up against the Eagles' offense, which wow, everybody was thinking that the Eagles were probably going to score 60 points against the Chargers because of because – of, uh, because of Chip Kelly's offense, and just to come away with the win, 33 to 30, it just really shows me a lot. And Philip Rivers had a very good game as well, 36 for 47, yeah. 419 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, he's had two good weeks. So it seems like, in a way, Philip is kind of Philip has been hot and cold here, but it seems like he's trying to get his way on the, on the way on the rebound. Yeah, he had a good game um, against Houston. It's just that you know. He had a bad fourth quarter and the defense collapsed. But, uh, yeah, he's had two solid weeks right now. Um, and, uh, I think he's confident in him, so he's getting confidence back. And uh, you, you got to like what's going on. Right. Now, shifting a little bit to the college football side here was the game of the century that everybody was talking about, Alabama against Texas A&M. Yeah, leave up to the hype to you. Hmm? They live up to the hype to you. I, I would say so. Even though uh, Manziel had a loss in this game, uh, he still put up close to the same numbers that he put up last year against Bama. Uh, in defeat, he really looked great. Um, and it's just once again, Bama just continues to be who, who they were and that they always would do here. But... I mean, let's look at the stat line here for Van Ziel. 464 yards passing, five touchdowns, two interceptions, two costly interceptions that if he didn't throw those, uh, we would pretty much say Bama, I mean, A&M would have beat Bama again. And 98 yards rushing. So I think in the feet, he really put the, he really had himself a pretty good game. But, you know, once again, it's just Alabama just continues to be Alabama. Right. So it just continued to be business as usual in that in that regard. And I, I guess it's just continue to be right there what what's really showed them. Now I think another another game that was kind of a little sketchy here too was like uh Michigan was pretty much on the ropes against Akron. Yeah, that would have been pretty funny if they would have lost, especially coming up that um, big win against Notre Dame. Right. And another side here, too, was UCLA against Nebraska. 
when Nebraska actually had themselves a 21 to 3 lead and that basically went up in smoke as UCLA scored the last 38 points in that game to win 41 to 21. A little bit of turmoil right now in Nebraska. Yeah, and um, the crazy thing about um, UCLA is a lot of people now are jumping on that bandwagon and looking at them to compete uh, to win the Big 12 now. Right. And I think that they could be one of those teams out there. I still want to see how they do. But, I mean, right now they're ranked number 13 in the nation. It's hard to ignore them right now. So I think they could possibly win the South again for the third straight year. I mean, who else they have coming? USC is kind of looking a little flaky right now. and You know, I think they're still pretty much the team that probably can get there into the Pac-12 title game. But in Nebraska, like we said, a little bit of turmoil right now. And uh, I don't know if they're going to fire Bo Pelini, but uh, it seems like right now that it's not looking good. Right. Um, Odds are he stays. Right. And I think odds are going to be he stays too. I think, though, it would be very crazy that if Texas, UCSC, and Nebraska all happen to have coaching vacancies at the end of the year, can you just already imagine the coaches probably lining up for those three jobs? Yeah, um, it's, it's going to be some, um, some, some shuffling going on. Uh, especially, I'm more interested in that, I mean, uh, Texas situation with Mac Brown. I mean, he's a good guy. He's basically, you know, been the cornerstone cornerstone of that program. What's going to happen there? Are they going to kind of push him towards retirement, or are they going to, like, I don't know. I'm anxious to see what happens with it. Right. I think they're probably going to, you know, they're going to give him that, you know, one of those paid positions up there in the office. You know, you're with the team, but you're not with the team and stuff like that. Because uh, over the last couple of weeks, they did not, they have not looked good. And they lost to an old Miss team, 44-23. to it's gonna look, and it's. I think it's gonna get bad for Texas more than it's gonna pretty much get better because their next game is against Kansas State, and Kansas State is a Kansas State pretty decent team out there. If if they don't find a way to get a win in that game, and let's say we're gonna say they're pretty much gonna beat Iowa State, but. If they lose to Oklahoma, that's going to put them at two and four in that in in that scenario, and at at the midway point of the season, and I could just only already imagine the the Texas fans pretty much wanting to get rid of him at that time. I, I mean, do you think they do you think they have the the gall to do it though? <sighs> Honestly. I quite don't know quite yet. Um, I don't think they do. But they might have to give in to peer pressure from the fans, though, too. Uh, I think the one thing that really makes this tough here is Mac Brown has tenure, and Mac Brown has given you one national championship game and was pretty uh, was a Colt McCoy separate his shoulder away from giving you a second championship game. So, if we, I mean, hey, if if, 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 um, if McCoy doesn't pretty much injure his shoulder, who knows? Mac has two national championship game, uh, two titles. He goes down to this route here, and next thing you know, nope, we're not having this discussion. So, I think the most, uh, no, I think the other thing is too, like, a lot of people are really put in there that his recruiting, like his recruiting too. So I think it's just going to be an interesting scenario right there. But I think they're going to they might uh, it, 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 if the right people stay, Max stays, and if the right people don't stay, then I'm pretty sure that they might just say adios. Right. Yeah, it's going to be unfortunate, but I mean, it's time for a new era. Right. And like I said, I could just only already imagine who's pretty much going to get that job and who all else is going to be out there too. Another game, and the last game really that we really want to highlight here was 
Uh, did you get a chance to catch the Arizona State Wisconsin game? Actually, the last few seconds of that. It's a little too late for me now. <laughs> well, it was a close. Uh, it was pretty much a little bit of a blunder here for the referees out there. Uh, Wisconsin had the ball. They're about to go ahead and you know get set up for a field goal. Quarterback gives himself up, tries to put the ball in the middle of the field, and he's running the football. His knee touches, and then he sets the ball down. But it also seems like right here, too, Arizona State, their defenders could not get off to get away from the ball anytime soon. And before everybody realizes it, next thing you know, it's just too late. The referees help out with Arizona State winning the game. Wisconsin loses the game here. And I just think that that was just crazy right there, too. Right. So, Sounds crazy. Yeah, it really was. I mean, it's just, I think it could have a big-time ramification, but, you know, this was a pretty good game. But, you know, it, it's just was, it just was one of those um, unfortunate things right there, too. And I would just hope that the referees at least get this, up, get this whole thing straightened out as well. So we're just going to go ahead and take ourselves a 30-second break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about we're pretty much going to give you guys our picks for the for the week here, all the NFL picks and also some of the big time college games as well. And after this, pretty much after we after we get to this, we're pretty much going to open it up to you guys as well to try to make your picks as well too, as we're going to try to have ourselves a little bit of a challenge. So we will be right back in about thirty seconds. All right, we're right back with the Gafford and Brown show, and very good first segment, and we're pretty much going to dive right all the way into our next segment here, and that's pretty much our NFL picks, uh, our picks episode right here. Uh, first game is going to be t- tomorrow night. Andy Reid returns to, to Philadelphia Chiefs play against the Eagles. Who's going to go ahead and win that game? Yeah, that's tough right there. Um, I'm going Kansas City. I'm, I'm taking that as Smith and Company. I think Kansas City's defense is going to get uh, going to get this win. Um, uh, I think Andy Reid's a smart guy. Pretty sure he's going to come up with some type of way to um get get Kansas City on the scoreboard. Uh, I'm interested to see how it's going to go. Though. I, I I like this game. The look out of it. it got, it's either going to be a blowout or a close. One. Right. I have a feeling it's going to be a close one, and actually, I'm gonna go ahead and probably go with the with the with the pick too. I mean, I'll I'll go ahead with Kansas City as well. Um, it just I think the Eagles are pretty much gonna they're gonna go out there with their fast paced offense, but I think the Chiefs are gonna go out there a little bit more, with a little bit more of a controlled offense and a defense out there that has not looked too bad so far this season. So. I think Kansas City keeps themselves in this. It puts themselves in this game, and I think they go ahead and find a way to pull out a win. Uh, the next game here that's on our schedule: the Rams against the Cowboys. This game is in Dallas. You already know who I'm picking. Cowboys. Man, this is <laughs> oh, this is hard. I like the Rams this year. I like the grit. I like the way they play. However, I can't see Dallas going down that far right now, so I'm going to pick Dallas. But I would not be shocked whatsoever if uh, the Rams pulled up a win. 
say one thing if I were Jason Garrett right now. Run the football a little bit more, please. The Marco Murray, 32 carries, 111 yards. Uh, those stats right now, I don't think that's going to cut it. Run the football a little bit more. Help Romo, please. Just please, this is from a fan. Packers traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. The Packers? Yes. Uh, yeah, Green Bay. Green Bay. Uh, Andy Dalton did not look too good against, against uh, did not look that good against against uh, Pittsburgh. So, and I think the Packers, I think they got back up, got themselves back on that stride against Washington. So, yeah, Green Bay is going to go out there and win this game. San Diego at Tennessee. I'm going to Tennessee. I think Tennessee bounces back after that heartbreaking loss in uh, Houston. I, I pick, yeah, I, I'm definitely going with Tennessee. Home team, Tennessee. Got to pick Tennessee in this game. Uh, but I would not be surprised if Rivers and company does have themselves a pretty big game as well. But I think their receivers are a little bit depleted at this time. And like I said, tough decision right here but going with the home team. Browns. At Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota gets the win. Finally. Minnesota wins this game. Uh, Browns got themselves their third string quarterback. I don't see them winning this game out there at any chance here. They pretty much have a depleted lineup. And whoever's going to be Trent Richardson's running back is pretty much a backup. I don't think has any carries this year. So, yeah, that's going to be very good luck right there on that one, too, even though they're trying to get Willis McGahee. Uh, do not like this one bit. I think it's going to be Minnesota easy. Tampa Bay at New England. Mm-hmm. Going with the book. Uh, as much as I hate to really do this, I gotta go with the Patriots in this game. Gotta go with the Patriots. Um, even though they're not getting Gronkowski back, I think Tom Brady is going to have themselves in a the victory here. But think about it right now: if the if it wasn't for the the Packers are pretty much, I mean, not the Packers, but the Buccaneers are pretty we're pretty much three points away from a two and zero start. So. But I think the Patriots are going to go out there and win this game. Arizona at New Orleans. Arizona. I think it's going to be a shootout, but right now I'm picking Arizona. Going with the Saints. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if both teams, and that, like you said about the shootout, wouldn't be surprised if both teams scored 30 plus, 35 plus, period. Uh, Lions traveling to Washington, D.C. to take on the Redskins. Picking the Lions. Uh, the Skins got to win a game sometime soon, don't they? I, I, I got to pick the Skins. I got. I got. I, I think. I, I think I got to pick the Skins here. Here, hopefully, RG three gets off the schneid, and hopefully, he gets himself ready in the for, in the first quarter, and at least the first half to do well. Giants traveling to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Mm, take the Giants. Yeah, I think they, so. uh, this team they either annihilated a year ago, so I think they're going. I don't think it's going to be as bad, but I think they're going to win. Right, uh, it's the same here too. Um, can't see, like I said, can't see a Tom Coughlin team go to zero and three this year. And I think it's going to be very unfortunate for the Panthers for them play, have playing well over the past couple of games here, losing by five to losing by five to Seattle, and losing in a heartbreaking fashion to Buffalo. Uh, it's just going to be so sad here to see them go on three. But New York, New York's got this one. Texans traveling to Baltimore to play against the Ravens. I'm picking the Ravens for the upset. 
Um, I think they're gonna win. I think. I, I, I just think right now he's just been getting real lucky. I think the stops against. Um, yeah, I think the stops this week. Yeah, I think this is gonna be the same here too. Um, much as I really want to go ahead and say Houston, uh, like you said, sometime that luck has got to be got to run out right now and. Yeah, I think it's gonna be um, this. It's, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be Baltimore in this game. Close game, but I think Baltimore is go ahead and, and win this game. Some of the late games are also happening. Atlanta traveling to Miami to play against the Dolphins. Yeah. Interesting. Um, let's see. You know what? I'll, I'm like I'm feeling upset, happy this week. Dolphins. Pretty much took the words right off the mouth. Dolphins. I think they have. I think the Dolphins can do it. I think they have just that that grit factor I like about them this year. I think Mac Wallace has a good game, so I'm taking the Dolphins. Yeah, I got the Dolphins too, and basically because the Falcons, uh, it seems like they've having health issues right now. Stephen Jackson is is going to be out for two to four weeks, so yeah, Dolphins. Bills against the Jets. Geno against EJ. Who wins this game? The game is oh, in New York. Man, the Bills. Definitely the Bills. That's what we saw last week. I, <laughs> oh, I got to take the Bills. Yeah. Woo. I got to go with the Bills, too. Um, sorry, EJ, but really, I mean, sorry, sorry, Geno, but EJ says looked a whole lot, looked a lot better a lot more impressive so far than you, and I feel like that he can. He's he's a little bit better than willing his team away to victory. So, Bills, uh, Colts traveling to the, traveling to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. Man, they better hope Pat Richardson doesn't play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Niners bounce back. I think the Niners bounce back and win. I, I really kind of want to pick the Colts, but I think the Niners right now are angry at um, Kaepernick. Uh, I'm probably going to get a lot of running out of Frank Gore, so I'm going to pick... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go with uh, San Francisco right now. Yeah, San Francisco bouncing back in this game, I feel like, too. Um, Colts. Uh, this is going to spoil Andrew Luck's homecoming to the Bay Area, but Niners going to go ahead and win this game. Can't see them losing two games on row, so, yeah, Niners. Uh... We should skip this game because the line is by 20, but we're just going to go ahead and say it anyway. Jaguars going to Seattle to play against the Seattle Seahawks. Oh. Yikes. Um, well, of course, the Seahawks are going to win. However, <laughs> you never know. We have a team that, I don't, I don't know, but I definitely pick the Seattle to win, but. I mean, upset to happen. Seattle, I don't know the lot. Uh, Seattle, and even though Seattle's favored by 20, um, seeing the Jaguars out here, I don't, I don't think the Jaguars are going to lose by 20 points. Hmm. I might just be go out here and make that my bold prediction right now. Jaguars don't lose by 20 points. Jaguars probably lose by like 19. So, Jaguars will beat the spread, but the Seahawks will go ahead and win this game. Sunday Night Football, Bears against the Steelers in Pittsburgh. Ah, man. I'm going with... God, this is hard. Now, dude, can, can, can you, could you fathom saying the Steelers go 0-3? No. That's why I have to pick this game. I have to pick them. Um, I think they come back. I think they get a little luck, a little magic, and a lot of big Ben. Yeah, and and another thing too here is you gotta think you gotta think Jake Cutler's luck is gonna run out sometime soon, right? Yeah, he he's been getting lucky right now, but Forte has definitely kept the the, the attack balanced. Mm-hmm. But I, I I can't see the Steelers go on with three here. Picking the Steelers in this game, picking the Steelers in this game. They, I mean, of course they they can. I feel like they're gonna win this game here and. If they don't win, it's gonna be it's gonna be sad to see what's gonna happen to Pittsburgh. But 
Pittsburgh wins this game. Do you think Mike Tomlin can lose the job? No. Pittsburgh is pretty much going. Pittsburgh is is one of the more consistent as far as head coaches is concerned. I mean, they've had three head coaches over the past 44 40, 40 years. Ah, he's not gonna lose his job anytime soon. I don't think. Uh, Monday Night Football. Raiders Broncos. The rivalry game. This game is oh, in yes. Denver. And you know who I'm picking? I'm picking the Denver Broncos to win. Um. Uh, Early into the season, well, you know what? I'm 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 gonna stick with my prediction. It's gonna I think it's gonna be a route three touchdown win. Mm. Broncos in this game, the line is by 16 points. I think the Broncos are gonna go out there. I think they probably either win by 16 or a little bit more than that. Um, it's not. It's not. I think it's a tough matchup for Terrell Pryor, honestly. And he's gonna get Sean Phillips, the Raider killer. Right. So. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna look like a very tough matchup for Terrell Pryor right here. He gets his first dose of reality in this game. The Broncos are just too good. The Broncos win this game. So right now it looks like we're all pretty square in as far as these picks, except for uh, there was a couple of games that we we chose a little bit differently. Cardinals and Saints. You have the Cardinals, I have the Saints. Buccaneers and Patriots. You had the Bucks. I have the Pats. And I think those are the only two, right? I think so. Yeah. So I think that's about it right there. Going to the eight, going to the uh, college football field, uh, Thursday night football, Clemson travels to NC State. I'm going with Clemson. Yeah, I hope Clemson does not pull Clemson in this one here. And, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and say Clemson in this game. Um uh, Right now, I feel like this team is too focused right now. So, Clemson goes out here, wins this game. Uh, Michigan State against Notre Dame. Uh, pick Michigan State. Gotta go with the Irish. <sighs> Tiger Bowl, Auburn against LSU game is in Death Valley. And it, yes, it's at night. LSU. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take LSU. Yeah, LSU. Um, these games this week are not too good right here, but um, let's see. Ah, Tennessee and Florida, and I know who you're going to pick in this game. Yeah, I'm picking Florida, but it's not confident at all. Florida in this game, I, I really don't have confidence in Tennessee. I, I, yeah, after they lost to Oregon, they have a lot to prove. Right. So, yeah. I think Florida is going to go out there and win this game here. And it may not be close. Um, let's see some other games here as well. These games are not looking too good. Kansas State, Texas. We'll go ahead with that one. Picking Texas, but <laughs> it's it's not looking too too promising. It's not looking like a surefire pick. Texas, please hook 'em horns. I do not want to see Mac lose his job. So gotta go with Texas in this game, please. Just 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 anything. 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 And, well, I guess we'll just go ahead with some Louisiana picks as well. Uh, ULM's taking on Baylor at Baylor. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm going with ULM. Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Hey. You know what? Yeah, I'll go with them too. Of course, school I went to and all that stuff. We beat Wake Forest last week, so that, oh, that hey. also had lots. So why the hell not? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Um, other Louisiana schools that are playing in this in this week too. Louisiana Tech travels to Kansas to take on Kansas. <laughs> yeah, I'm big kid. I'm picking Tech. Oh, nah, it's what now? Nah, why? Something about Charlie Weiss, and I guess I'm still bitter about this. 
for some about Charlie Weiss it's not surprised me right here and some about Kansas does not surprise me right here so I know Tech does not have the same team as they did the last couple of years but let's just go ahead and say Tech I feel like Tech I, I, I feel generous right now let's go ahead and say Tech generous eh yeah I'll go ahead and be a, be a generous person um Tulane taking on Syracuse at wow. Syracuse. Tulane. After how Tulane looked against Tech last weekend, I mean last week, I think Tulane probably is going to get the upset against Syracuse. They got, and you know who their quarterback is? Oh, uh, no. Uh, Nick uh, Nick Montana, who is the son <laughs> of Joe, Joe Montana. Hmm. So I'll go ahead and say them. Legacy lives. Northwestern against Alabama, uh, UAB, uh, Alabama, Birmingham. I think Northwestern wins again. Why not? I mean, they're, they're on the roll. Go ahead and say, yeah, I think they'll go ahead and win this game or a pretty close loss. Um, Cincinnati kind of put them in a little bit of a reality check here. But UAB, even though they're a tough squad, um, lost to Troy in overtime, got drummed by LSU, coming off a bye week. Um I think Northwestern looks pretty good here. I might give them this win or go ahead and probably say that they might make this a very close game. Um, Utah State and USC. Ah, uh, USC. USC, but this is going to be close, I feel like. Utah State's quarterback, Chuck Keaton, is pretty good. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to keep them. I think he's going to keep them within about, I'll say, seven points. And we're going to see some more fans out there saying "Fire Lane Kiffin." <laughs> Last but not least, Arkansas State. I mean, Arkansas against Rutgers. Arkansas is three and zero. Oh, Rutgers is two and one. Uh, Arkansas. I think man, this is their comeback season. So I think I think they win. Uh, games in New Jersey. Rutgers beat them last year. Ugh, man. I might just go ahead and say go with the home team in this game. I'll we say Rutgers. Rutgers. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say them. Close game, though. Close and entertaining game, though. Close and entertaining game. I think... But I think Arkansas still could possibly try to make themselves into a bowl game. So, so there's that. And I think of all the big time games out here, there's that. I think that's pretty much it. Um, even though Michigan is playing against UConn on ABC, I think I think we already know pretty much who we're gonna pick in this game. I got Michigan. Yeah, I'm picking Michigan. Yeah. So. Uh, I t- hopefully next week is probably going to be a little bit better because I'm already looking forward to other games, probably like Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech and Oklahoma and Notre Dame, which is going to be next week, and LSU Georgia. So I think next week is going to have a better slate. But um, as far as this week, not looking too good, but still some marquee games, so at least we're going to get a chance to watch this. Now, at least get a chance to see some games here and there. Uh, let's see. So after this, we're pretty much going to go ahead and take ourselves another break. And we'll go get back to what else is going on in the world of sports, too. Including the thing that we that I think I had just alluded to you. That if anybody that's listening out here, you might can be able to get some tickets for this week's Florida-Tennessee game. We're not giving them away. But a Tennessee fan is giving them away. But there's one catch. You have to date his daughter. Hmm. We'll tell you a little bit more about that next on the Gap of the Brow Show.
All right, we're right back with the Gavin Brown Show and very good first couple of segments and, and all that. But I guess the I guess the next thing here, this is the time that we have a little bit of fun right here. And I've seen this article on CBSSports.com at work. There is a Craigslist ad that offers a free ticket and a date to the Tennessee-Florida game. Uh, reading here what Tom Fernelli wrote, Looking for a free ticket to this weekend's game against Tennessee and Florida in Gainesville? Well, there's one available to you if you happen to beat a few requirements. Florida man posted an ad on Craigslist for a free ticket in the game, even though there is a bit of the catch. Now, here's the quote for word for word. My stepdaughter's date backed out. His loss, your game for the game. You got one free ticket for the Tennessee-Florida football game this Saturday. Cost to me $150 on the 40-yard line for the right gentleman. You must be an attractive, professional, single, well-educated gentleman with a good sense of humor. 25 to 33 years old. You must. You also must not be threatened by an attractive, professional, single, well-educated lady, as she is. If you do not qualify, please pass this ad to a friend. The fine print, I lied. Sorry, not totally free. Your cost would be a modest dinner Drinks and the life of the conversation with her before or after the game. Also, the ad states that being a Tennessee fan is not a requirement, but that it is highly desirable. Hmm. Now, what do you what do you take away from that? Because I think he pimping his daughter basically. Uh, <laughs> I gotta take the uh, man. Yeah, I think you pretty much hit the bell on the head on this one. Crazy thing is this: this would be kind of like a blind date in a way. Pretty much. Pretty much. So we don't know. You know, the father is saying the girl's attractive and all that stuff, but we don't really know. No pictures. No pictures. We we don't really know here. I mean, I'm on the quick. Oh, actually, I'm on, on the quick list thing right here, and I see the picture right now. She's pretty. So, I mean, why did the guy pull out? I mean, I, I don't know. She's pretty. Yeah, she's she's pretty. I mean, it, I, I, it's it, it it seems like it's it's something. I I'm kind of. I would say this. If I'm if I'm one of those person people that would enjoy looking at a game here, and especially with the woman likes sports, I'd say why not, even though the catches. However, if it's her dad that is doing this, something has to be done. You think so? I mean, does she like the brothers? Maybe so. Who knows? I mean. I probably would throw, I don't know, I probably would throw my head in the ring too, but uh, it, it, it just seems to be right now, I mean, it's just, it's just, oh, it's just whole, cra- it's just very crazy here, but like you said, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head too, dad's got to pimp his daughter out a little bit in this case as well, and there has to be also, now there also has to be a reason here too, about the guy pulling out. That's my thing. I mean, right. Why did she? Why did he pull out? I mean, ah. those tickets. I would have been all um, over. Mm-hmm. So it's just crazy, right? Right then and there. But like I said, she's pretty attractive right there, and I think pretty much during after the show here and all this stuff, I'll pretty much tweet the link again and just let you all decide for yourself too. Um, you know what else is there as well. Let's see. Other things that also happened over the past couple of weeks here. Floyd Mayweather wins another fight, but it did come with a little controversy with the judge actually giving him a draw, Ooh, taking away his, um, taking away a unanimous decision, yeah. just making it a majority decision. Yeah, and that's simple because if you saw the fight, Floyd Mayweather dominated uh, Alvarez the entire fight, mm-hmm. and uh, it was. Pretty much something that really pissed everybody off there. Probably Alvarez. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because Floyd took the fight. 
Floyd had the fight, and Floyd once again shows why he is pound for pound the best fighter in the world right now. And you know, hum but Floyd was a little bit humble in this in in this defeat. He said that Alvarez was going to be, it still is the future of boxing and all that stuff. But it's just Floyd is the top dog right now, and rightly so. Uh, but but right now, I mean. Dang, I, I mean, I guess the Floyd continue, is continuing to do this here. At, at, you know, on the other side of 35, I mean, who's going to beat him? I don't think anyone right now. I think he has, uh, he, he said he's going to fight again in May. Uh, there was a couple of names being kicked around, but I don't think anybody can really beat the guy. I mean, I mean, no, don't get me wrong, nobody's unbeatable. But mm-hmm. I just don't see it happening. Nah, I, I can't either. I think... The only time that we probably had a chance of seeing this, seeing probably something like this could happen is if, you know, Mayredder would have probably fought Pacquiao, and I would have loved to see that. But um, seeing how Floyd is still staying up there at his level, and Pacquiao has kind of became, became like a, well, out of the radar here over the past couple of, over the past couple of years and months and stuff. Uh, it's it's pretty much Floyd, everybody else. All right, so you know, pretty much you got that. Let's see some more stuff that's happening right now here as well. Uh, Hall of Fame boxer Ken Norton Sr. passes away at the age of seventy years old. Hmm. Yeah, I saw that earlier. That's, that's that's wow. That's sad for the just boxing in general. You know, Ken Norton, a well-known guy. You know, mm-hmm. Ken Norton Jr., a well-known football player. You know, uh, man, it really is. And I, I, for one of the things that I used to remember those '90s uh, Cowboys and also the '90s 49ers thing was. Every single time Ken Norton would score a touchdown, as kind of a homage to his father. He would, you know, punch the goalpost, you know, right. punch the goalpost and all that. And, you know, just to see Ken Norton Sr. pass away, who was part of that, part of those uh, great heavyweights in the 70s here with, you know, Muhammad Ali and and, uh, and Joe Frazier and George Foreman. Uh, it's just, it really is another shocking thing right there, too. And like I said, 70 years and hearts go out to him and also hearts go out to Tom Coughlin's brother which CBSSports.com says has died unexpectedly man yeah that, they give the whole game the emotional feel now right so I think I think that right now pretty much I you know it gives a little bit more for the Giants to, to go out there and win this game a little bit more for them so I think I think they're just going to go ahead out here and say, um, New York Times is saying the Bills like what they see in EJ Manning's promising start. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, I mean, just from preseason, he's going to be the starter. Mm-hmm. And they took him first round, so yeah, they, they have to stick with it now. Right. They made the right decision, and we all groaned about it at the at the draft, but I wasn't that mad with it. Right. I wasn't that mad with it just because, I mean, why not? Mm-hmm. That's what's hot in the streets right now. The whole, you know, uh, option read. So right, why not take a guy that's good at it? So it just would have been, you know, I know a lot of people wanted them to take Geno, but EJ's really has looked so good, and and you see how EJ, how Geno's doing now. I think they made the right decision, and I think this week's game is going to be a little bit more of a test here to see what they're going to do out there. Um, let's see. The 49ers fans write to the st- write to a newspaper objecting to the Seahawks' loud stadium. Hmm. Uh, I think that's going to be a little bit much to do about nothing, though, in this case. Bernard Pollard, the Patriot killer, fined forty-two thousand dollars for his for his hit on Andre Johnson. I, I, I don't care. I, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. Not at all. And Bernard Pollard actually showed a little bit here too. Uh, showed a little bit to his tweets here. 
He says, so NFL said I did everything right, but $42,000 later and I still get fined? Wow. It's called football, but they want two-hand touch. So I was getting to that point, too. And it seems like most of the fines, and I think I've seen this on, on either um, ESPN or Fox Sports 1, that it seems like most of the fines are going to, like, defensive players as opposed to offensive players. Hmm. So... You know, thoughts about that? I mean, well, I don't think it's will see an offensive player get one unless they stiff on yeah. you know, which is bad. The helmet thing. Yeah, and that's mostly running back. So it's pretty much going to be all defensive players give you penalties and whatnot. Right. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But I guess it is what it is. And once again, it just goes back to the old adage like, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. And. So even though you might be playing defense the right way, I think you're still going to be a little bit temp- you're still going to be a little bit more prone to fines if you're on defense because people want to see offense players do well because they want butts in the seats. Right. Just as simple as that. Um, let's see here. The Los Angeles Lakers finally reveal a new black uniform. Blackout. Here, the L.A. Light, I think the Hollywood Knights jersey right here. Um, once I can pull it up right now, get, let you get a chance to see it too. But it's going to be black. It's going to have some gold trimming on there too. It's going to look pretty good, I think, if I can get a chance to see it, if I can pull it up here. Um, I'll probably put it up a little bit later and let you see it. But... I think from what I've seen, from what is rumored, I think it's going to be, it's going to look very nice. And once again, it gives the Lakers a new color to really experiment with. Yeah. Paul George plans to sign an extension to the Pacers before this season. <laughs> I was surprised he hasn't gotten paid. <laughs> I mean, why not just pay him? I mean, uh, now what, have they done anything with Danny Granger yet? No, they have not. Well, it's, it's still early. We'll, we'll see. Right. So I think with the writing is pretty much going to be on the wall with that. I uh, read somewhere, too, that Houston Rockets so GM Daryl Morey says that there are three teams that are better than the Rockets right now. Are you talking I, about the West or the entire NBA? Let me see. I think he's talking about in, let's see. I think he's probably talking about an entire NBA. Let's see. Yeah, Rockets are chasing three teams out here, and it's looking like. Let's see. This is, this was him on the radio saying this, and. They're chasing three teams, and it is uh, let's see, Miami, Miami, Oklahoma City, and San Antonio. Ah, more than that. I mean, uh, I don't think uh, for him to say that, that means he thinks there's a number three seed in the West. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's another three seasons with it. No. I think there's at least top five in the way. Right. Uh, I mean, we'll see, of course, when the season starts, but I don't know. Right. Um, there has to be a little bit more than three teams. So I guess we'll go ahead and toss out the names here, too. Uh, Heat, obviously. Thunder, obviously. Spurs, obviously. Clippers? I think they're better than the Clippers. Uh, that's I would put them in maybe in a tie with the Clippers. Mm-hmm. I don't consider the fact that the Clippers are going the first round when they come. Warriors. Warriors, though. Agreed. Pacers. Agreed. Slightly. Agreed, though. No. Bulls, especially to get the Airplanes back. That's a tricky one. Uh, defensively, I'll say the, well, I'll say the Bulls, just because they're, they're so good defensively. Mm-hmm. 
but we did see a Houston team without uh, Dwight Howard put a hell of a beating on them in that Christmas game. Oh yeah. So, uh, I would I would give the edge to the Bulls right now because they roll. We got to see what they right. roll look like. Right. The Rockets are probably a little bit better than the Bulls right now. Um, so I guess that's four teams right there. Knicks? They're kind of, they're kind of the same team. Yeah. Similarities are, yeah, the similarities are there, too. Similarities are there. I think the Rockets are probably going to play a little bit more defense and the Knicks are a little bit more offensively, but yeah, the similarities are there. Last but not least, the Nets. I would take the Nets over there right now. Just because that veteran, uh, that veteran uh, atmosphere they have, man. Right. It's not gonna. It's, I don't think it's gonna show in the record, but once it comes down to playoff time, um, yeah, the Nets. I'll go ahead and say them. And I think those are pretty much the only teams that are right now that are probably a little bit better than the Rockets right now. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Because let me see. Is there another team out there? Um, Grizzlies? Uh, that's a, that's a trick. Um, I would say the Grizzlies may be right you know what? That's hard. I, I'll put the Grizzlies over though, mm-hmm. just because defensively. And I think that would be a hell of a seven-game series against them, to be honest with you, too, because uh, the Grizzlies have been around, you know, to longer uh, as far as the playoff squad is going to be concerned here, too. And I think that would probably be one of the teams that Houston was, would not want to see, especially with Gasol and Zebo being down down the post. So. Probably see the, uh, the Grizzlies being being there too, but I think I think that's about it right there as far as teams that are probably better. Let's see what else is also in the news too. Uh, let's see here. Robert Griffin III says his knee is fine, and he says he will run if it's needed to. Spark the only two skins. Um, I believe him, but at the same time, it's not all him and uh, his running. I I, I don't know. Uh, it's definitely a, on defense, right? Or stopping teams, but I think he has to do more than run to be successful. You know, making the proper read, getting rid of the football. It's not just necessarily him running. Exactly. Exactly. Um. And I guess with a lot of people, the backlash year of them doing this at 0-2, um, you got to think about it once again. He has not played a preseason, so he's trying to get himself back on onto the field. And he's just, he's just trying to get himself back, back out there. He'll be back. He'll get ready. He'll get better in due time. I would not really try to... You know, be a little bit. I, 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 I probably would make this much ado about nothing. To be honest with you, he'll get better. We'll see the big explosive player that he is, and he's pretty much going to come back. Um, Birdman cleared of. Let's see, for more than a year, Miami Heat center Chris Birdman Anderson lived with a cloud under his over his head and a sullied reputation after authorities in Colorado. Raided his home as part of an investigation surrounding a relationship with an underage girl from California. It came to light that Wednesday that not only Anderson was not guilty of a crime, but he was the victim of an extremely complex internet scheme. Yeah, catfish, basically. I, I read about that earlier. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, you know, good thing that he got cleared of this. But once again, it's just shows again that social media can sometimes be a little bit tricky here. Yeah, we've seen it happen to, uh, well, supposedly happen to, uh, you know, San Diego linebacker uh, Teo. Yeah. Now we have, uh, you know, Birdman. So I, mean, I guess it's possible for you know, even celebrities to fall for it. Right, exactly. 
And let's see. And also, this is the part of the time, too, with baseball season is starting to get a little bit hotter with the playoff races as well. Um, I think we got about a couple of games left in the season here, so I can't really wait for the playoffs, to be honest with you. Yeah, this is my favorite time of the year. Uh, you got the playoffs, you got the NFL going, basketball will soon be here, so it's always a fun time for a sport. Um, Right now, you know, the Dodgers are one of the hottest teams in baseball, storyline-wise, record-wise. They're, they're, they're just right now hot top of them and the Pirates. Mm-hmm. Who's your, uh, what's your favorite story right now going to the playoffs? Um, sadly, right here, I would think that, like, um, as far as, like, some of the teams here that are limping into the playoffs, um, I guess the, the storyline right now would be, can can uh can Texas stop the bleeding? Because uh they have struggled over this over this month. They've won only about three games, I think, or three or four games right now. And they had a lead against Oakland and now they're six games back and they're in danger of possibly losing their wild card spot. So I think that's gonna be uh one of the big time stories here too. I think another one though is Kansas City's not too far out from the playoffs. Um, they're like three games away. Pittsburgh is right there in that driver's seat, and Washington is just trying to try, trying to make a run. And, and these were like some of the teams out here that we would that we were thinking about that you know when would they ever make it back to the playoffs? And it seems like all three of them are right there in this dead, uh, uh, right there in the last few weeks of the season. So I would like to see. I would like to see all three of them make it, but if not, I would really, I'm really rooting for Pittsburgh, outside of the Braves and Texas to see how well that they do. Right. So, because I, I, the the Pittsburgh has not done well since the uh, the Barry, since they lost Barry Bonds. So, you know, seeing them come right back, I think that's that's a very good that, that's a very good story right there for them. But um, hopefully, they can keep it keep it the way through. And hopefully they can get themselves a little bit of a um, of a comeback. Uh, here's another crazy thing here too um, from a story that you probably would never would never hear about every day. An ex NFL player watches his New York home be trashed by partying teens live on Twitter. Brian Holloway. Ah. Uh. I, I haven't heard anything about this. Uh, I'm definitely taken aback by it. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> uh, let's see. It says here, but it, uh, let's see. Former NFL offensive lineman Brian Holloway initially thought the Twitter photos were a hoax. Then he saw pictures of his teens of teens standing on the dining room table. He bought the uh, he bought with his Super Bowl winnings. And Let's see. His rural vacation home was trashed during a Labor Day weekend party attended by an estimated 200 to 400 teenagers. And Holloway said the partiers caused at least $20,000 in damage, breaking windows and doors and punching holes in walls and spraying graffiti. And he how, saw the whole thing unfold. How pissed off would you be? I think words were pretty much words. Words could not describe what I would, how pissed off I would be right now. I I would say this right here: if we were actually on a radio station, like a real radio station, I think the FCC would pretty much find me right now for that. How pissed off would you be? Oh, and Hernandez, man! Oh my to God! To do Aaron Hernandez things, that's pretty much how mad I would be. Exactly. I would probably go out there on the streets with a metal bat and probably wielding it at the next person that would probably look at me wrong because I would want some answers. You know how Stone Cold used to be like everybody's guilty until proven oh, yeah. innocent or something oh, like yeah. that? Yeah, pretty much. Don't trust anybody. I probably would do just a couple of Stone Cold stunners and also drink a couple of beers along the way as well. And speaking of... Uh, Night of Champions. Yeah, uh, I didn't see it, but from what I read, you were the man. You, you got it right. 
Yeah, uh, I just I felt like I just really wanted to see Daniel Bryan go out there and win the champion, uh, win the championship. I feel like that that you know he's pretty much the people's choice right now, and he went out there, won it. Uh, we didn't see any other title reigns change hands, unfortunately, but you know he went out there, he won, he won it, and we saw his uh his new uh his new championship plate. Did you get a chance to see it? I have not. I think it has yes, yes, yes on the side of it, of course. So, I, I think again, I think I really love the way how the the, uh, the WWE is doing those championship belts, doing at least yeah. the, their championship belt yeah, as it's well. Different, yeah. It's a whole different story because I mean, it's it, it's nice. It's, it's it's nice. It's fresh. It's, it's also fresh too. And I think there's another story that I saw on there yesterday. Um, New NFL rule means that the Buccaneers cannot wear their retro cream sickle jerseys. In other words, uh, they can't wear a different helmet. So I think... Uh, what? Yeah, exactly. Where did this come to play? I think before the season, I'm reading this here from USA Today. It says here, while we regret our players will not be able to don the buckle Bruce helmet in the traditional orange, red, and white uniforms, there was simply no acceptable way to meet the requirements of the new policy while staying true to the spirit of our throwback theme. Um, in other words, the issue with the helmets were to be, which were to be worn during the team's Hispanic Heritage celebration is that they are not the usual helmets the players wear. The new NFL guidelines suggest that once a player has his helmet that he likes and that fits him well, he should continue wearing that helmet throughout the season. The introduction of a new helmet midway through the season ru runs the risk of putting an improperly fitted no, helmet. Concussion rule, basically. Yeah, pretty much. And I feel like, once again, it hurts teams from doing what they have to do. And I understand why they're doing it, but it, once again, it hurts these teams that have the different, you know, the different helmets that they're wearing to go back to what they were. I mean, let's see. Think about some of the teams here that don't have the same helmet design. Buccaneers is one of them. The Chargers? Chargers is another one. Uh, the Patriots, their throwback uniforms. The Falcons, which have brought back their those red helmets from time to time, too. They couldn't be able to wear those. It's just, I can understand the reason why they're doing it, but wouldn't there be a, like another way, though, too, that could they, like, as far as helmets and stuff like that, like, wouldn't it still be the same way? I mean, I, I, you would think so, but I guess the NFL is so nitpicky right now about that. Since you know, they don't want no lawsuit. Right. So I would just think one of these days it probably it it's, this whole thing would probably go would probably blow over a little bit. Um, but until they get some research on this, unfortunately, this is pretty much going to be the same rules and. Same regulations that they're gonna have. So, um, unfortunately, that's pretty much gonna be the case, and we'll see about that. And I think that's pretty much gonna be it. Um, Gilbert Arenas also may get a Clippers camp invite too. Is he still the, the league's highest paid player? Yes. Wow. <laughs> You gotta love the NBA. <laughs> Giving players bad contracts since forever. The eighties. <laughs> I have. I still have my uncle. God rest his soul. He used to make fun of Allen Houston's big time contract. Oh yeah, I remember him. New York just got out of it. Isn't he a consultant now? Yeah, he's just a consultant. So man, it's just, it's just, it's just so crazy right here too, and uh, it's just, I, 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 I just cannot, cannot see any anything. And also, uh, last but not least, Royce White and Fab Melo are ranked as the worst players in the NBA. Wow, that's kind of fair, huh? Considering they haven't played much at all. Gosh, no cold world, no blanket. Right. Royce is right now with the 76ers, and we got Fab Melos, to, uh, I think, coming in the camp. So, 
Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see what, how that's going to be here. If, like I say, if Royce can ever get get past his get past his fear, he'll be all right. And if if the Fab Mello can actually showcase that, you know, how good is he? You know, uh, who knows? He might be a pretty decent player as well. And I think those uh, rankings might turn out to be a little bit of, you know, motivation and fuel for him. So we're pretty much going to end the show on that note. Uh, next week, uh, show probably sometime uh, Monday, maybe. And we'll probably go. Yeah, we'll probably go ahead and try to do that during the uh, during the Monday night game. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably go ahead and try to do that because I got a feeling that this Monday night game is not going to have any bearing on our week four picks. Right. I have a good feeling about that. So uh, we'll keep you updated on that. And anything else you want to go ahead and say for, to the fans, too? Uh, not much. Uh, just, you know, go ahead and uh, keep listening and keep those pics coming and share those pics with us. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're going to try to get ourselves a new Facebook uh, page for everything that we do as well we might try to do the same thing for twitter so keep on the lookout for that we'll try to we'll try to get that up there up and running sometime soon isn't there a usc fight this weekend too yeah it's uh john jones fight this weekend thoughts about that um i'm excited to see that um i think he's gonna win and keep his you know keep his title but everybody thought the same thing about Anthony silver so who knows Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Well, we're pretty much going to go ahead and call it a wrap of the show here today. Um, once again, for, for everybody that's listening, continue to listen to us. And thank you very much for your support. I'm Lamar Gafford. I'm Robert Brown. And that is it for episode number 45 of Gafford Brown Show. See you guys next week. <laughs>